Rates are all around you. Anytime you ride in a car, go to the grocery store, or attend a sporting event, you hear all kinds of rates and unit rates. There are three words that you're going to hear with this lesson. They are all very similar, but they each have a distinctive meaning. First is a ratio. This is a comparison of two numbers by division. You should be very familiar with this word because of your weekly vocabulary. An example of this is 6 over 3. Now that might make you a little bit uncomfortable because you're thinking, wait, that should be simplified. It should be taken down to a whole number of 2. And if we were talking about a fraction, that would be the case. However, with a ratio, it does not have to be um, simplified down to a whole number. You could simplify that down by reducing it to 2 over 1, and you're going to see that when we come down to the unit rate. But as it is right there, that is an okay way to write a ratio. In elementary school, you may have seen ratios expressed with a colon in the middle or the word 2 in the middle, and that also describes a ratio. However, we're going to focus more of where it looks like a fraction because of the way that we're going to use it in things in algebra next year with words like slope. Next is a rate. These are ratio that compares different units. So it's those same numbers, six and three, but we have units applied to it. In this case, dollars and pounds. This might be how much you spend on apples at the grocery store. You pay six dollars and you get three pounds worth of apples. Then a unit rate, it's a rate in which the second quantity is one unit. So above that apple stand at Walmart, it would say two dollars per one pound. When you look at the grocery store, it's often not as clean cut simple like that with whole numbers. It's usually something like $2.42 per pound, or if you go to bananas, they're 48 cents per pound. Another way that ratios are different from fractions is it's okay to have portions of a number in the top or the bottom. You could have 6.1 or 3.2 on the bottom, and that's okay. Think about when you hear sports statistics. If you are hearing something about somebody's points per game, They'll often say that certain ball player scores 18.2 points per game, and we know you can't score 0.2 points in a basketball game, but it is a unit rate, and when you divide it out, it ends up with a decimal, and that is okay. To find that unit rate, what you do is you divide the top by the bottom. Think of that line as a division symbol. We've been trying to get you used to that in the last two units of seeing division written with a line, and this is the reason. Because what's happening is you're actually taking those $6 and you're splitting them up into three separate pounds. And when you do that, you're paying $2 per pound. So finding unit rates. Here's an example. During exercise, Sally's heart rate beats 675 times in five minutes. How many times does it beat per minute? So think about the way that this is worded. It says beat per minute. That was an awful underline right there. <laughs> beat was spoken first, so it's going to go on top of your ratio. We're wanting to take the number of beats that Sally's heart beated and divide that up over the number of minutes that she was measuring. So take the context from the problem. 675 beats per, think of per as that line that separates the two quantities, per five minutes. And remember that line between there, it means to divide. So when you divide that out, 675 divided by 5, use your calculator. Whatever number is on first is going to get punched in. Whatever number is on top is going to get punched in first. So 675 divided by 5 is 135. So your answer, your unit rate is 135 beats per minute, and it has to be per one minute because that's the definition of a unit rate. Unit rates are what you hear more often. Miles per hour, revolutions per minute, miles per gallon, dollars per pound, points per game. You will hear unit rates all of the time. A consumer math application. You have this family, the Lawsons, and they're driving around, but they stop at a farmer's market. And so they're trying to decide which size lemonade is the best buy. And this would be like the menu at the farmer's market. You can buy a 12 ounce glass for 89 cents, an 18 ounce glass for $1.69, and 24 ounce glass for $2.09. 
So to find the unit, I'm sorry, to, to find out which one is the best buy, you have to find the unit price of each drink. And a, something to remember is unit price will always be dollars divided by whatever the unit is. When you're talking about a unit price, which is simply a unit rate with dollars attached to it, the dollars always goes in first into your calculator. That's what's on top of the ratio. So we have each of these ratio or each of these rates up here. So we're going to divide out 0.89 divided by 12 and you get 0 0.074166666. Okay. Now let's divide the next one, a dollar 69 divided by 18. Point zero nine three eight repeating, and then the twenty four ounce two point oh nine divided by twenty four is point zero eight seven zero eight three repeating. So once you find the unit price for each one, and what this represents is this is how many dollars per one ounce. When you compare that one, the 12 ounce drink is the best buy. It is the cheapest per ounce. Once you become an adult and you're trying to make the most of your money when you're shopping, if you're like me, you'll be doing this a lot at the grocery store or at the at Walmart. I do this a lot with toilet paper, for instance. They'll be running different packages of toilet paper on sale. And so what I do is I find which package is the best price per roll. So in my phone, I get it out and I open up the calculator and I'll divide the price for that pack of Charmin by 48 rolls. And then I'll compare that to the other one, that price for 36 rolls. And that's how I decide which package of toilet paper is the best buy. Um, I will also do this, um, I compare meat this way. If I'm looking at packages of meat, I'm not necessarily going to buy the cheapest package of meat. I'm going to look at the price per pound because different cuts of meat will be different prices per pound. Next time you go to the grocery with your parents, I encourage you to do this too. And you might even teach your parents something about making the most of their money at the supermarket. So let's practice this. Try these on your own and then compare with what I've done. On A and B, I purposely did two different ways to solve these. So nine runs in three games. That one's pretty simple. You probably were able to figure that one out without a calculator. I sure hope you were. On this one, I divided the top and the bottom both by three, and I, and I thought of it more as like a fraction that I'm reducing. Nine divided by three is three. Three games divided by three is one game, and so my answer is three runs per game. You can also see the difference in how I wrote this. I put three runs on top per one game. Now look at B, 324 words in six minutes. I just divided 324 by six in the calculator. I got 54 
and my unit is words per minute, so it's written words per minute with a slash, and either way is completely acceptable. Part C to find the better by, I divided each of these quantities, and for the first one got $27.6 per meter, and then for the second one got $32.5 per meter, and the first one is the better by.